This movie is missing something. It's missing one thing that would have just elevated this movie to just this crazy, it would have become the godfather of superhero movies, and that is Africa by Toto. <laughs> So Black Panther is the newest movie in the MCU, it, what is this movie 18 now? It's directed by Ryan Coogler, the director of Creed, which is my favorite movie in the Rocky franchise. So I was looking forward to this movie because of that, and also just, you know, it's Marvel. This movie takes place right after the events of Civil War, where T'Chaka, the King of Wakanda, was murdered, and so his son T'Challa, aka the Black Panther, now has to take his place as the King of Wakanda. All the while, there are internal tensions with Wakandan tribes that have been going on for centuries that he has to deal with, and also these new threats from a couple new villains, and now he has to step up to the plate and become the king. It is crazy to me the amount that this movie has taken off. Like, all Marvel movies are successful, and the majority of Marvel movies are well-liked, but it seems like everybody loves this movie, and it seems like everybody in America went to go see this movie over the weekend like three different times, judging by the box office numbers. Am I part of the crowd that loved Black Panther? Yep, I am. Now, it's not perfect, but no movie is, and there's a lot of things in this movie that work great, there's a couple things in there that don't work as well, and we're gonna talk about all of it. Starting out with the lead in this movie, Chadwick Boseman as T'Challa, the Black Panther, he carries this entire movie. I wanna say that T'Challa is one of my favorite, one of the most fleshed out heroes in the MCU, but then I think of like, oh, but there's Captain America, and there's Thor, and there's Iron Man, and even like Star-Lord, but that honestly is just a testament at how good Marvel is at building up its heroes. He is so good in this movie, he's used to being the Black Panther, He's used to being able to like take down the villains and do his hero stuff be the protector of Wakanda the peacekeeper But now he's the king and he was the prince before so we did have a little bit of like political edge going on in his life already But now that he is the man in charge He has to deal with all this stuff He has to deal with these feuding tribes and like we saw in Civil War T'Chaka wasn't sick He wasn't like slowly fading away. So we had time to prep for this It was gone in an instant So Black Panther is kind of thrust into this role and Chadwick Boseman nailed it now one thing Marvel doesn't always do super well is build up their villains So how were the villains? in this movie. Andy Serkis plays Claw, you saw him in Age of Ultron, he does a good job, he's kind of Joker-ish. You know when the Joker is like, I'm an agent of chaos. That's kind of how Andy Serkis feels in this movie. He's fine, he gets the job done, he's cool. However, the main villain of this movie is Michael B. Jordan playing the villain Killmonger, and he's one of the best villains in the MCU. I'd probably say Loki, probably Killmonger after that, and then the Vulture from Spider-Man Homecoming. And I personally don't always slam on the Marvel villains. There's certain ones like Ronan and Malekith where I am like, okay, yeah, you deserve to be hated on. Majority of Marvel villains though, I'm like, yeah, they're fine. They were cool. They got the job done. They gave the hero something to fight. But I feel like Killmonger really elevates what a villain can be in a Marvel movie. And all three of those top villains that I mentioned, Loki, Killmonger, and the Vulture, they all have such personal depth to them. And all three of them, you get why they're doing what they're doing. They're just going about it the wrong way. And those are always the best villains. However, at the same time, you're still rooting for the hero to fight them. You still want to see those villains go down. Everyone else in the cast was really good. I'm not going to go through all their names because, honestly, I'm probably going to mess half of them up. One more standout, though, is Letitia Wright, who plays the character Shuri, which is Black Panther's little sister. She's this really cool, smart tech wizard. They have a cool brother-sister relationship. She's kind of like Q from James Bond, plus the sibling thing, so she was awesome. But one thing that really sucked me into this movie was just the world of Wakanda. I love fully fleshed out worlds like this in movies. The world of Wakanda, it kind of reminded me of, like, the Na'vi from Avatar or the elves from Lord of the Rings, you just really get the feeling like this is a centuries-old civilization with a rich backstory, a rich culture, rich characters, rich traditions, but it's not overkill. There's definitely certain scenes where it's like exposition pieces, but I feel like they're able to show you what's happening as much as they tell you what's happening, so it never really gets boring because of that. This movie does travel outside of Wakanda like once or twice, and it was kind of cool seeing that. It was cool seeing Black Panther go to, you know, like South Korea, but I was totally fine with this movie taking place in that one location. If I did have to point a flaw with Wakanda is the fact that Wakanda is an entire fictional civilization with entirely fictional landscapes which means of course a lot of green screen and not all of that green screen really blend like there's a couple of backdrops and a few CGI characters in those backgrounds that look a little fake so that can pull you out of it a little bit but I was actually surprised at how well those effects got me into Wakanda because the distracting moments that I mentioned don't happen that often like I was saying earlier this is one of the more personal movies of the MCU there is a lot of action in this movie but I would probably say less action overall than a lot of the other MCU movies it kind of reminded me of like Iron Man 3 in that way which is a movie that I really liked. I mean, this is a very personal story for the character of Black Panther. It's one of those things where you can really put yourself in his shoes. You get the feeling that you are discovering these parts of the story with him. You're learning how to be a king with him. So that when you get to the end of the movie and you have the final fight and stuff, you are like just as charged up as he is. I do have a couple issues with this movie. Like I said, the effects don't always land. The majority of the fight scenes that happen in this movie, like I said, there's not too many, but the ones that happen are really good. But there is one near the beginning where it's, it's dark and it's in a forest and it's, you know, he's in a black costume. But that fight 
fight in particular relied on a lot of shaky cam, which I've seen Creed, so I know Ryan Coogler can do action very well, and a lot of the action in this movie, again, works. It's just that one scene, I was like, uh, what's happening? And then I think this is something I'm kind of going to be alone in, but I... I didn't always like the music choices in this movie. I gotta say, the soundtrack done by, I think his name is Ludwig Gorson, the composer of the movie, I thought he did a great job. His really strong, like, African drums going, kinda reminded me of The Lion King. That was epic. There was this really cool fight scene they showed on a waterfall, which I think happens in the trailer. But the music during that, it's awesome. I've been rocking it in the car all weekend. But it's whenever it goes into soundtrack territory, which Kendrick Lamar did the soundtrack for this movie, and being up front, I'm not a big Kendrick Lamar fan. And it got a little distracting. Like, there's this one scene, it's the classical film score, a little bit of African drumming going on there. It's working really well. Then Michael B. Jordan comes in and all of a sudden it starts like this trap drum rock beat that completely just flipped the tone of the scene. I was like, whoa, we had something cool here. And the scene is still cool. But it, it, let's change up that music. I will probably be alone in that, I don't know, but I kind of equate it to someone that watches Tarzan but hates Phil Collins. Like, no duh, you're not gonna like the music in the movie. But all of that stuff aside, Black Panther was awesome. I thought it was so cool, I thought Chadwick Boseman rocked the movie, I thought Michael B. Jordan was one of the best villains in the MCU, I thought that Wakanda was one of the richest civilizations ever put to film, I thought that the personal struggle that T'Challa goes on in this movie was really entertaining, really got you on board with his mission. This movie is like The Lion King meets Avatar meets like The Dark Knight slash The Dark Knight, right? And since I love all of those movies, I thought this movie was awesome as well. So I'm sure you have seen Black Panther by now because, like I said, everybody in America seems to have seen this movie this weekend. But if you haven't seen it, go rush out there and see it. But if you have some time to kill before you're showing, I want to tell you about something that I've been working on for a little bit. I think it's kind of fun. It's Marvel related, so I thought I'd mention it. You guys might have seen on social media, like Facebook, Twitter, that if you started the Marvel movies at a certain point, I think it was either the first week of 2018 or it was the last week of 2017, and you watch one Marvel movie a week, then you will have watched them all leading up to Infinity War. So I've been doing Doing that it's really fun to revisit these movies there's a couple of them I haven't seen in a while something like the Incredible Hulk and Iron Man 2 certain ones like that I just haven't seen in years and re-watching it, it's been a lot of fun and I want to talk about all of them but obviously there's a lot of them so I don't have the time so I've been utilizing this new app called Stardust if you guys don't use it it's a way you can post like 30 second reactions to pieces of media whether it's trailers movies TV shows and I've been recording all my reactions to the Marvel movies on there so right now I've done like the first Iron Man through Iron Man 3 this week I'm watching Thor of the Dark World which I'm not super jazzed about but I don't know we'll see what happens so if you guys want to see what I think about all the Marvel movies leading up to Infinity Wars, you can go there, you can see all my little reactions. It's been a lot of fun, I want to share it with you guys. And thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys liked it, you can click subscribe and check out some of my other videos, and I'll catch you guys next time.